Let's look at the solution to a RASful quiz. So the question was, is it better to not push anything anymore once the RAS is full, or simply wrap around and keep overwriting old addresses with new ones? It turns out that the wrap around approach is much better than the don't push approach. To see why, keep in mind that our program will look like this. We have the main function, it executes for a while, then calls some other function. This results in pushing something onto the RAS. Our high-level function here will do a lot of work, occasionally calling other functions and so on. We push. To see what happens here without running out of space, let's say that our RAS only has two entries. The first entry will be consumed by pushing the return address when main calls do it. The second one will be consumed when we call the function func from do it. At this point, we're calling the function do less, and it might call, for example, the add function many, many times. So we're getting to the place where functions are really small, and ideally we would you know, push each time and then pop when we return and so on. If we only have one entry, then really our entire RAS will be used just when we call do it, and as long as we stay in do it, which might be a very large function because it might be doing most of the actual work in the program, all of the function calls that we are doing really end up being mispredicted because we ran out of RAS space. And the one time that we will have a correct prediction is when we finally return from do it. If we have two entries, a similar thing will happen. We will consume the first entry by basically pushing the first thing. So pretty much we are kind of using an entry here just to save one misprediction at the final return. Here again, we are using the second entry just to save the return from func whenever that happens, and func itself could be calling a lot of functions. So the don't push approach, basically spending entries on kind of long-term things that need to be remembered so that we can finally save a misprediction once we reach the return point from the large function. In contrast, the wrap around approach is gonna push this, push this, push this, thus overwriting this entry. So now what we ha are doing is we're basically going to be correctly predicting calls to small functions and returns, and we can have many of those, in return for inaccurately predicting the final returns from large functions, because we have many more small function calls than large function calls. In the end, we are eff more effectively using the few entries we have. Pretty much here, we are kind of using the entry to save a misprediction over a very short period of time, thus this entry gets utilized and then released very quickly. Whereas here, we are using an entry for a long time to save a single misprediction, and in the end, we want to save as many mispredictions as we can. So that's why the wraparound approach works better, because it ends up correctly predicting calls to small functions, many of which we can have, in return for not correctly predicting the return from large functions to main, etc. Another thing to keep in mind with the RAS is that it is a predictor, so either way we will be having some mispredictions. We are allowed to have mispredictions. All that will happen is that there will be a branch misprediction. Basically we will fetch the wrong instructions and have to recover from that. So in the end, the discussion about what to do with the RAS has to do with achieving a larger number of correct predictions, but neither of these two ways can actually do things perfectly. So in the end, we need to just choose which one gives us more correct predictions, and it turns out that the wraparound approach predicts better than the don't push approach, while both of them result in mispredictions anyway.